Okay, everybody. Um, today, the dog is getting a birthday. I'm putting on a new prop, and those of you who know me, I'm a big, big fan of warp drive. I've tried quite a few different props, um, three blades, four blades, different configurations, but the warp drive uh, value for money, durability, uh, is by far, comes out favorite for me every time. Uh, just for everyday uh, pitch settings and having a good, good stole prop, uh, that can also give you a good cruise speed um, and be reliable in the uh, off country or back country style uh, out in the riverbeds and the beaches and picking up stones and stuff which always happens um, the warp drive so far for me has proven to be absolutely number one um, reason being obviously I've just told you and um, here we are about to install a new one and you might notice uh, I have four blades here no, I'm not putting on a four blade warp drive. Um, warp drive, when they manufacture their uh, props, do everything to a serial number, which is all based on the back of your uh, drive there, back of your blade, and also imprinted into the shaft. Now, being from the other side of the world, if I have an incident where I do happen to chip a, a blade, it's going to set me back. Uh, several months at this stage with the way shipping and that is, although warp drive are very fast at, at getting things out and I can ring them or email them and say hey listen this is my serial number, I need a blade, uh, they'll manufacture a blade to that specification from that serial number batch, um, but that's going to take time. So for the sake of a couple of hundred extra dollars, um, having a fourth blade there as a spear is highly recommended, especially if you're not located close to the factory. Um, so yeah, first of all, uh, they send you out a uh, protractor, which is uh, by far the handiest little tool that you can have. I often change my pitch settings if I'm flying up to the competitions. I have it on my everyday uh, pitch setting. Get to the competition and take a couple of degrees out of it. It's such an easy process to do. Uh, nice list of instructions with your torque values and how to do things. Some lovely little... Uh, decals which will go on to my uh, cowling later on, quite a place, and some stone edge guarding which you put on uh, this edge down here uh, to help protect this edge when you've got the nickel inlay. So what I have is what they call the square tip. It's a 72 inch blade with the nickel inlay and um, they are just as durable as anything. We call them wood splitters here in New Zealand because uh, you can stick a log in one end and get kindling and um, wood chips at the other end they're that strong, but don't try that. Um, also we've got the new hub and bolts, um, this is my previous spinner, I don't like the big spinners, um, I actually just like to have plenty of air going around um, and I've just always had one of these so that works fine for me. Um, I have a spacer and this is what goes on the outside which uh, my spinner bolts to like that. So as you can see I've already removed my other um, blades and hub from my Viking 130 and just checking everything out when I've got stuff off um, and yeah I'm going to start putting the blades together three of them onto a hub and then set it all on so stand back watch I'll move the camera around a couple of times and um, see if we can't come up with a, a video of how I do it anyway um, hopefully you enjoy and watch so Okay, one of the first steps that you want to do is obviously lay everything out, make sure you've got the right amount of bolts um, and your hub. So your hub is made up of two halves, obviously. Uh, one half has recesses in it for your location lugs, which is obviously going to be your back. So that should just slop onto there like that. That is the back that goes up against the hub here. Okay, so once you've got that, you can take that back off, you know which is your back and which is your front, and you can carefully lay out your bolts and everything from there. So I like to do mine in reverse, uh, where I have my bolts going through from the front and the nuts on the back. So I feed them in like so. Then I'll lay that one down, like so, 
and I can start placing in my blades. Just be careful that uh, obviously you don't want to drop your blades and potentially damage them before you get, get them uh, all put together. So it pays to have an extra set of hands or uh, be very ambidextrous. Um, and a bigger table would help too. Putting those on there. And we'll just slot that over the top. Like so. Then I can hold that whole lot down with uh, one hand. Quite simple. I'll lay the washers on top, which is actually the back of the um, prop. So I don't know whether you can hear in the background, it's a very windy day here, so it's a perfect opportunity to be able to do little maintenance jobs like this. I've had this prop here for a little bit, but uh, due to lockdowns and time, I just haven't had a chance to put it on. So looking forward to it, although I know exactly what it's going to be like. Um, the reason why I'm putting another one on. And the only reason why I'm really doing that is... Um, my other prop is going to be kept as a spear and uh, although I might do what I did with my last one and uh, sell it cheap or give it away to someone starting out um, but obviously I run a 72 inch prop because of the uh, engine and gearbox configuration that I have and obviously I've got extended gear and forks and so forth so it gives me uh, better ground clearance allowing me to have a longer prop so just putting these on Some of these processes are in editing. I'll fast forward so you don't have to listen to me gabber on. I've been asked many times by uh, people all the time I get uh, contacted on social media or even on the phone or messenger. What prop do you prefer? What's your pitch settings? Uh, that takes a lot of experimentation and that's doing thrust tests and so forth. But um, anyone who's ever contacted me, they'll, you'll know straight away, I'm just a huge proponent of uh, warp drive props, just their durability. Okay, so we're set there to go now, and basically what's going to happen with that is um, I can't fall out. So what I'm going to do is just tighten these up a little bit, just so they're nice and snug, and um, then I'll go to put that on. So I'll just go and get myself a, a spanner and be back shortly. Okay, one thing you have to get used to if you're on our side of the world is uh, a lot of this stuff is obviously Imperial and there's also some stuff that's metric. Um, for example sake, the hub bolts themselves are metric or 8mm uh, and then the bolts that come with these are obviously Imperial from uh, the US manufacturers. So I'm just going to snug these up a little. I've got one of these fancy uh, four-way ratcheting spanners which helps a lot. And obviously when I go to do the uh, final tighten up, I will need to have uh, a torque wrench. But just in the meantime, just going to give these a little snug up.
Okay, nice and snug, they can't fall out now, but they're still very loose. So, place that into the spot. And what I like to do with the bolts is that uh, because I change my pitch, not frequently, but relatively regularly, at least a couple of times a year, I use Nordlock washers. Uh, these things are incredible if you do your research on them. I've never ever had one come loose. I often, because all I have to do to remove my spinner is just uh, take a little Allen key out, or Allen wrench, and um, I can check with the torque settings to make sure that nothing's moved and, uh, like I said, swear by them. So I use, uh, like these are eight mil, eight millimeters with the Nordlock washers on them. And this is what holds your whole assembly together onto the hub. The spinny thing at the front of your plane. Okay. Just gonna move this out of the way a little bit. Make some adjustments. Alrighty, then it's just a matter of locating the uh, lugs onto the spacer. Like so, holding it on there and just uh, feeding these uh, bolts on and just finger tight them up for now. <laughs> what we do need to do before we go too far Got my assembly which holds the prop spinner in place. It's on. Going anywhere now. And being uh, eight millimeters, the uh, uh, 13 millimeter heads on our metric system. Now all I'm doing is taking this up so that it's snug. I need to be able to, if you push down too tight on this, then it'll lock your blades all in place and you won't be able to do your final setting.
Okay, all the blades can still be moved. That means that there's no wobbling in the actual hub assembly itself, so I can set a level. Now you don't have to have these perfectly level when you're uh, doing them, as long as they're uh, close to what would you'd call level when you're doing it from the same position each time. But I do like to get a tape measure and just double check everything. So if we stick these around about there and measure one and then we can do them all at the same height. So I've got 1235. Right, here comes the fun part. This little device. This is the protractor and basically what you're doing is you don't have to level your plane. This is why you can do it in the field, it makes it so much easier is that uh, you take your leading edge, it's got some little locking screws on there and it gives you good instructions in the uh, paperwork that you get from uh, warp drive regarding on its usage. But basically all I do is I set up this side here um, away from your clamping side. Clamping side's going to be on the face and the flat side's going to be on the back flattest part of the blade. And what I do is find my zero. Now usually my, I'm pretty lucky my plane sits pretty close to zero at the best of times depending on how much fuel I've got on it so I am exactly zero there so what you would do is if I was off I'll see if I can bring this up so you've got zero and zero if it was off then that can give you you might be say five degrees out of zero so if you wanted to do 10 degrees you already know you're negative five so you'd have to go to 15 to get a 10 degree pitch but because I'm sitting on zero, I can start from there. And I know from previous uh, experimentation that my everyday pitch setting is 13 degrees. So I will set my zero point at 13 degrees and lock the little locking screw and then that stops that from moving. But it pays just to check it. Every blade just check to make sure it's still on 13 and that you still got the point at the top which is this little locking screw here and use the point so I come right to the outside edge center of the, the blade itself and just do up your little uh, wing nuts just so it's snug Basically centre everything, check my degrees, and then I can just adjust till your bubble comes right in the centre. And it's as easy as that. I'll bring that over. So you can see the bubble in the centre down there. Nice and simple, in the line. Okay, once we've found that centre then, these ones here which actually clamp your blades, I'm going to snug up so the, the blade stays in place. And I'm not going to use a torque wrench just yet, because all I'm doing is snugging it in place. If you do them up too tight, then it'll start clamping the other sides and you won't be able to... Uh, adjust your other blades. So just nice and snug. And then before we uh, end up using the torque wrench to lock it all off, then we go back around and check them all again. Okay, that's still within, yep, still right within between the lines. Take that off. 
Rotate. And bring that up to about the same height. Double check my degrees to make sure it hasn't moved. Nope, perfect. And put that back onto the end. Center it. Sometimes they can take a little bit of filling around and you just go a bit too past it. That's why you don't want your blades too loose, otherwise they move too fast. And you don't want them too tight, otherwise you sort of have a difficult time doing it. Happy with that, I'll snug those ones. Now in the field, it generally takes me about 15 20 minutes to change my pitch. Um, like I said, I do it probably a couple of times a year, and uh, sure makes a big difference when you really want huge performance. But uh, like I said, my 13 degrees is my everyday pitch, and I'm happy with that. It uh, gives me great takeoff performance, as you've probably seen. But with the Viking 130 on, I can still get 80 to 90 knots out of a 701, which is generally pretty unheard of. But uh, big blade, strong gearbox, and an uh, engine with a lot of torque. That's what you end up with. Double check that it hasn't moved. Center it. And just rotate it around. Now there are all sorts of other types of uh, levels and that that you can use, lasers and whatever else, but in the field, honestly, this thing is so simple. Okay, happy with that. And uh, you don't need a lot of tools. I usually just carry one torque wrench, which will do both settings. But for today, I've got uh, my big torque wrench and my little torque wrench set up so that I can um, have torque values set for the clamping bolts and torque values set for the eight millimeter um, hub bolts. And uh, what I like to do is torque, torque the uh, the blades, uh, what I'll do once this is snug is I'll spin the um, proper gain and check all three blades to make sure nothing's moved while I've been uh, sort of mucking around with it. Okay, that's still good. Beautiful. As you can see, I'm not checking the uh, height because it's basically where it sits is pretty much level across there. And I'm just checking to make sure there's been no major movements. And that's perfect spot on. So, uh, we're we'll going to get our instructions. And at page, on this one, page five, it has our torque specifications. So for the quarter inch clamping bolts is 10 foot pounds or 13.56 Newton meters, which is what I am working on, Newton meters. Double check that that's 13.56. Put the locker on. 
And I always talk the nut end. Um, I don't know why, I guess it's just probably the way I was taught. But I go through and just start at the back, get them snug, and then just double check everything as I go. I go around and around and then um, do this three or four times and do it again once I've done up the uh, hub, hub bolts as well because that also clamps things together and can often make um, these bolts get a little bit looser once they're all done. Excuse me, I'm left handed so sometimes it looks a bit awkward. Now I think it was uh, Texas Cruiser, um, Dave, he's got a fancy torque wrench, I think it's an electronic one that does beeping when it uh, gets to the point, I'm pretty sure it was on one of his videos that I saw when he was putting on his duck, or duke. Obviously I have no power on the aircraft at the moment. I'm free to be able to rotate the uh, prop as much as I want. Okay, that's all the, the clamping bolts, and we'll move to my larger one, which is 15 foot-pounds, or 20.3 20 newton meters, 3.4 newton meters, 20, 2, 3, 4, and these ones, similar sort of thing, I'll just get them snug. I just go around the clock. Sometimes I'll go across to the other side. Kind of like doing up wheel nuts. Just so there's no clamping and uneven. Okay, start from there. Give it one more round just to make sure it's great. And I'll go back and check my um, clamping ones again just to make sure that that hasn't loosened any of them off. All good. That one was loosened up a little. Perfect. Doesn't seem like a lot of uh, pressure, but it seems to work. I've never had anything come loose on me yet. Okay, that is torqued, set, ready to go. Um, 
Yeah, so what I'm going to do now is put my uh, leading edge tapes on there, on these edges, and um, then she's uh, for a thrust test. Okay, this is the uh, leading edge protection tape that they uh, send you as well. Um, they come slightly longer for what I'm requiring, as you can see it goes too far, so I've cut mine to length. And I'm basically going to lay it just on the inside here in line with the nickel inlay. Quite simple, just make sure there's no dirty fingerprints on it. Give it a good wipe down on the clean rag. Peel the paper off the back of it. Helps to have fingernails when you're doing that. Tricky like wrapping a present. Line it up. Try and keep it relatively level all the way through. And then just fold that over, working your finger along as you do it. It's nice and malleable. And should be able to squeeze any air bubbles out if there's any. They also supply a nice little tool like this for running along that edge. Just making sure everything's nice and firmly on. Finger works just as good most of the time. It's just an added protection. Um, I'll edit in some video footage of uh, some of the takeoff landings or, or just the everyday stuff that we do around here. And you'll see a couple of them I've driven through rivers. And um, there's one reason why. These props are also very, very popular on amphibious aircraft as they handle the spray incredibly well. This, as I keep saying, that, just an incredibly durable prop. Okay, there she is, all buttoned up. Looking the part, back to normal. And you see what I mean by um, having that small little nose cone spin and I've got plenty of airflow going through the front there. It's, yeah, I mean, being a water cooled engine, I don't have any issues. But uh, hot, hot summer days, when you're stooging around with your nose up looking for places to land, it helps to have as much cooling as you possibly can. And we got right through down into the into the radiator. Yep, there she goes. Viking powered warp drive. Yeah, time to pull her out and do a thrust test. So that was 261 at uh, 5200 RPM static. I think I'll probably stick with that for now. 
it's uh, virtually identical to what I've had. Um, I'll fly it a couple of times. I won't fly today. It's a blustery old day. But uh, yeah, I think it might be time to go and have a beer. Now I just happened to have one there waiting. Look at that. So thanks for tuning in. Hope it was somewhat uh, informative. If you've got any questions, just reach out. Uh, always happy to talk about the jug and the modifications that I've made, uh, the gear that I use. Um, Everyone has their own opinions of what they like. I'll just give you mine. Um, and yeah, proof's in the pudding. Cheers, and uh, let's hope I catch up with you guys sometime soon when this world opens and I can get back over to the air shows and. Uh Riverbed over the back, the boys out playing on the motorbike. So uh, catch you soon. Hope to see you all again. Cheers.